Hello everyone and welcome to another SQL query training session with Learn at NoStar. In today's session, we are going to write SQL queries to load data from a CSV file into a database table. We are going to be looking at two methods or two ways of doing this. The first is using the bulk insert and the second is using the open row set. So let's get started. So I have this CSV file. It's a very simple file with simple data. We have two columns, ID and product. ID is, if you look at the data, it looks to be an integer column and then you have some string characters in the product column. So the first step when we are going to use the bulk insert method is going to be creating the table in which you want to load this data in your database. So we are going to simply create a table here and I'm going to call it dbo.demo and we're going to create two uh, two columns in this table uh, which are related to the data that we just saw so the first column would be the ID column and the second would be the product column so ID as we saw the data was mainly integer so I'm just going to define this as an end and then I'm going to define the nullability as null I mean, it all depends on the data that you have. You can define the table structure based on your kind of data. Now for the other one, the second column was product. So I'm going to give it the same name product and I'm going to define it as varchar 100 and I'm going to define this as a nullable column as well. So now this is a table that I am going to create. I just need to execute this simple query. And once I have executed this query, my table is ready. Now the second step is uh, to load this data from the CSV file. So to load this data, we are going to use the bulk insert command. It's very simple, straightforward. What we need to do is just write bulk insert. Then the table name, so dbo.demo from and now you need to define the path where your file is located. So a file is located in the C SQL files folder. So I'm going to give that path in my SQL query. So we don't need the, um, the bracket. We just need the code C and SQL sorry, files and the file name is the file name is test test dot csv and then there are various options which we can define so obviously when we look at the data in our file we see that the first row is the column header so we want to insert the data from the second row in this case so there are various options which we can define so we just need to write with and in the brackets then we can define all these options so the very first option is we need to define from which row we want to start loading the data from the csv file so the option is going to be first row equal to two then the other option that we can define is the field terminator so field terminator which basically means your delimiter so the delimiter is comma and then the next option that we have to define is the row delimiter so row terminator which is going to be a new line so you have to define the new line in this case so this is going to be the new line and then you can define your batch size batch size equal to let's say 25,000 and then uh, let's also define the maximum errors that might occur because we have defined the table structure if there is any data in a CSV file which does not match the data types that we have defined in our table then uh, what uh, action has to be taken so for that we are going to define maximum errors as two so if two rows are there just ignore them continue loading the remaining data but if there are more than two errors encountered which means more than two rows have mismatched data type or other errors then stop the load and 
that's all that's all that i'm going to include in my query now there are many other options that you can include um, i'll provide a link below to the microsoft documentation on this function so you can check all the different options that can be provided but these would be the most commonly used options now i'm just going to run this query the whole query that we have written um, i'm going to just do this so that we can see the whole query so this is the complete query i'm just going to execute it so the file could not be open so i'm just going to go and close this file and now i'm going to execute this again and we will see that four rows affected is what we have got now uh, because we have we had to close the file um, that's okay so what we're going to do now is we are going to check this table for the data so i'm just going to go down and okay write this select query select star from dbo dot demo and we should be able to see the data from the csv file loaded in the table that we just created so this is one way in which you can load the data from a csv file into a database table so really simple um, a very simple straightforward syntax um, bulk insert statement that you have to write now moving on to the second method the second method is using the open row set command so let's see how we can use that so let's open a new query window and write that query so i'm just going to write the open row set query just to view the data so we at this point we are not loading it into any table the open row set can simply be used to view the data intermediately as well so what we have to write is select a dot star from open row set so that kind of becomes a temporary table or a subquery and then you have to define bulk because we're going to read from a file system so you have to use this keyword bulk because open row set can be used to create ole db connections of various other kinds as well okay so once you have written bulk which means we are going to read a file from a file system you have to define the the folder location or the path of the file so it is going to be the same for us sql files test dot csv and then you have to define an option in which you have to say in which format you want to read that file so the common formats which are used are single blob or single clop so let's try using the single clop which will you uh, read all this data um, as a varchar so uh, then you have to define it as a Okay, so this is the complete query that we're going to execute for now now just note here that we are not inserting the data into any table we're just reading the data here by creating an oledb connection to the file system so now if i execute this query you will see that i have all the data but you will also observe that all the data has been concatenated into a single column okay from all the rows and all the columns they've all been concatenated into a single column now obviously we do not want this then what can be done so if you're using an open row set there's another option here to define a format file format file equal to and then i have a format file in the same location so i'm just going to copy this and the format file has the extension of fmt for format um, i'm just going to show you the format file the format file has to be created in this particular order so this is the format of the format file the first one is a number i think it is the driver version or the sql server driver version so you need to enter that i'm not sure exactly what it refers to the second number that you see here is two it refers to the number of columns in your data so if your file has 10 columns this would be 10 over here then you have to start numbering the column 
you have to define the uh, you have to define test equal char zero the main thing that you need to change in this file is over here which defines the length of that column if it is an integer column by default you need to write seven if it is a var char column then you need to write the length so our product column was 100 so we have written over 100 here then what is the delimiter after that column so after the id column we had a comma so that is what we have written over here whereas after the uh, the second column a new line starts so that is what we have defined over here uh, a new line and then again the number the column names over here then if it, it is an integer column or a float or decimal you can just leave it as uh, empty quotes but if it is a string column then you need to define your language settings language collation setting i think over here which is defined over here and then you need to have an empty line at the bottom as well so i will be sharing this file you can use the same file if you want to create a format file the only things that you need to change here is your number number of columns and then your column names um, for all of the columns except the last column your separator or the delimiter would be a comma for the last column it would be rn so you can leave it as is then you have to change the column length and then for string columns you have to put the sql latin one general or whatever is your language setting so this is the format file which I have at the same location. Now the purpose of using this file is that we have defined that a CSV file now has two columns. So the data would be read in that format. So now if I execute this query, instead of all the data coming in a single row or in a single column, I should be getting it in different columns. Now I am getting it in different columns, but what you would observe here is that the first header line has also been read. We do not want it, the header line to be read in this format and there is some N++ over here as well, which we do not want. So we can simply skip reading the format file, the first uh, row. So again, you can say, you can use the same option that we used earlier for the bulk insert option and say first row is equal to two. So now if I read this or execute this whole query, I will be reading my entire data. Now, till now we have been just reading the data. Uh, our purpose was to insert the data in a table. So now there are two options. You can create a table separately and then insert this data into that table. Or we can also use the functionality of the SQL Server in which we can create a table directly based on the structure which is read from this query. So this can be done uh, in SQL Server. There's an option to do that. So that is what we are going to do now. So for that, what we need to do is we simply need to uh, use select into your table name. So dbo.demo we already created. Let's create demo1 and from okay so this is how you can use the select n2 in sql server to directly insert your data into a table and create the table based on the structure of the data that you're inserting so it would be created in while executing this query itself you do not need to create the table separately now let's try to execute this query what you need to do over here is you have to write select star which means that it will be selecting all the data from this uh, open row set query into this table and creating this table at the same time so now if you execute this query you will see that four rows have been affected what we need to uh, do to verify this is simply do a select star from this table demo one And you will see that data has been successfully inserted. So this is the, these are two ways in which you can insert data directly from a CSV file into a database table in SQL Server. I will be sharing all the queries and the format file as well with you. So you can use that as a reference. I hope that the video was useful and helpful for you. If you like the video, then please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And also please like, share, comment on the video. Thanks a lot for watching. Goodbye.